always gathered online. Uh, we are, we have officially ri- arrived in the land of joy. It's true. The snow is out. We're back here in person. And this week we began the month of Adar, or more accurately, the first month of Adar this year. There are two. So we have two months of this special double month of joy. Misha Nichnas Adar Marbim Besimcha. When Adar arrives, joy increases. Simcha increases. This is the month of joy. This is the month of the holiday of Purim, of silliness, of a world upside down. It's the holiday of celebration. Soon enough, we will be chomping into delicious homentashi. So in this vein of joy and silliness, today I'm gonna talk to you about dolphin skins. That's right, folks. Dolphin skins. This week's Torah portion, Truma, is the beginning of the creation of the tabernacle, the Mishkan, the holy sanctuary, which the Israelites used as their center place for worship and meeting with the divine. The Asuli Mikdash Vishachanti Betocham and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And so we made it out of Egypt. We're on our way to the Holy Land and we're to create a tabernacle for service, for worship, for the divine, where God will dwell. And somehow, and we'll get to this, it has to do with dolphin skins, I promise you. God speaks to Moses and says, tell the Israelite people to bring me gifts. You shall accept gifts for me from every person whose heart so moves them. Each person is to give an offering and people bring all kinds of things, all kinds of things from their possessions that they give over for the creation of the sanctuary. They give gold, they give silver, they give copper, blue and purple and crimson yarn, fine linen, goat's hairs, acacia wood, oil for lighting, spices for the anointing oil and the aromatic incense. They bring lapis lazuli and other stones for setting for the ephod and for the breastplate all for the creation of this beautiful tabernacle. And they bring dolphin skins. This is what it says in our Torah portion this week. I was intrigued. Follow me, come with me on this journey. So what do you do when you're intrigued? You open YouTube and you find out what is with this. So that's what I did. And I listened to this fascinatingly, absolutely dry uh, YouTube on the topic of dolphin skins to create the tabernacle by the renowned Hebrew Bible academic, Dr. Michael Heiser. And he says, he's, he questions this. Did they really bring dolphin skins? I mean, really? Uh, it could have been, he says, could have been goat skins. It could have been Uh, They could have been talking about something entirely different, a kind of color, a certain color of a particular stone, maybe a a yellow orange, or it could be associated with the dyeing of leather. There's some association here uh, with uh, other Semitic languages uh, at the time that had a connection to certain kinds of color. But he ultimately says, it's not dolphin skins. It's maybe the thing being dyed or the color that comes out of it being dyed. And one of my favorite uh, academic scholars, Everett Fox, he translates it as tanned leather skins. Okay. 
I went to another source, another translation of the Torah, Rabbi Arya Kaplan, and he translates it as blue processed skins. Drawing from various Talmudic and Midrashic sources to come to that conclusion. Countless rabbis have spilled over this word, this word uh, that people are translating as dolphin skins, tichashim. What does it mean? Others, he claims, could be black leather. In ancient Egypt, tachash was a kind of worked leather. Other sources say it could be another, a kind of species of animal, an ermine from the family of weasel, or Rashi, the famous medieval commentator, says uh, that it's part of the badger family. Or it could be this part of this mythic creature, the Keresh, a colorful one-horned animal. I mean, people are getting real creative here as you go down this pipeline. Other people say a wild ram, an antelope, an ocape. I have no idea if anybody knows what that is, please let me know, and a, and a giraffe, or even a 16 foot narwhal, which I learned its left tooth sticks out just like a horn. <clears throat> I even brought some pictures. Could it be, could it be a dolphin? Um, other people say it, uh, it could be a, um, anybody know what this is? We can do show and tell. It looks like a manatee, but it's not a manatee. What did you say? Yeah, good, good catch, but no. Actually, other people said that it was a dugong, which I never knew what a dugong was until this is amazing. I got to explore this crazy looking creature. You see this? I mean, it's funky. This guy is a, uh, a porpoise. Does that make sense to you? No. Okay. It didn't make sense to me either, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so which one is it? I don't know about this tanned leather thing. Uh, I don't know about the orange yellow color thing or the stone thing. I just think Let's go with the cool thing, dolphin skin. Wow, where did they get this? And some people say that uh, uh, in the ancient Near East, they use dolphin skins. Uh, and so that's where they draw, that's where they drew from this idea. Thank you for going down this bizarre journey with me. I really appreciate it. Um, and, <laughs> and, I ask you, what, what does it all mean? Why, why, why? Well, it's the month of Adar. So it's meant to be a time of joy and silliness. And so I brought you a little something silly, but I also think that there's something deeper to it. Uh, there's something a little bit absurd. We have this, we have this word, uh, Tehashim in the Torah and nobody knows what it means. I mean, there are a lot of words in the Torah. And it's, this one is not used very much. So for literally thousands of years, people have been poring over this in an almost, I don't, I don't wanna say fully, but an almost absurd way, uh, poring over the, what this word can mean. Literally thousands of hours have been spent trying to figure this out. We live in an absurd time. We live in an absurd time. Turn on the radio and it's one bizarre story after the other. Pouring over thousands of hours of one bizarre story after another. I think I turned to this topic this week because I was looking for an out, a distraction from it all. Let's look about, let's look at dolphin skins. Maybe you know that feeling. Things are so absurd around us, we find all manner of 
distractions, to cope, to deal with the absurdity of it all. But our tradition says there can also be a joy in the absurd. In fact, poking fun at the absurdity of life is what this month is all about and is one way that we can connect to the divine. And maybe even deeper than distraction, distracting ourselves is to go into it a little bit deeper. This is the teaching of Adar. This is the teaching of Purim, where Mordechai, we're told, becomes Haman, and Haman becomes Mordechai, where good and evil are laughed at. Not because we don't care, not because we side with evil, not because we don't think that life is precious, because of course it is, but because sometimes absurdity doesn't deserve rationality. Absurdity begs more absurdity. And because we're also meant to laugh at ourselves and look at pictures of porpoises and dolphins and joy and things that bring us happiness. And not to take ourselves too seriously, lest we fall into arrogance or we lose humility. So, in the spirit of things upside down, and as one of our members likes to say, Shalom Shabbat, and Shabbat Shalom, and may we find deep joy in this season, a touch of absurdity when it's needed, and uh, a lot of laughter. Shabbat Shalom.